we're going to install the third member differential with the ARV air locker. I farmed it out. I went to Sean at River City Diffs and Sean did magic and put the air locker into the third member. When I got there, the first thing he brought up was, is this a coarse splined output shaft, pinion output shaft? I said, I don't know. He proceeded to take a bolt out and revealed that it was a coarse spline and he upsold me on a fine spline ring and pinion to avoid breakage. So more money? More money, but less problems, unlike the rap song. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the ARB. Come on. When I got the differential, this copper line was out here in a little bit. Um, after some instruction and speaking with George Ester -er of Valley Hybrids, uh, I ended up running the line closer to this side right here, real close to the ring and then kept a lower profile. I'm gonna show you what I did to the housing. Is that that hole over there? The energy's still low though. Yeah, I had to bore out the hole a little bit. Pfft. There's a gap right here that looked like this guy, but I had, I opened it up. A little bit of sanding, a little metal material removal. And that was per George. I also rounded the edge on the inside. There's gonna be a dog breathing in the background. <laughs> Anyway, you can take some material off up there in order to fit the third member in. The dogs are just real entertained by us today. They murdered something in the yard that they want us to come look at. Permatex gear oil gasket maker, part number 81182. This is what I'll be using to make the gasket, in case anybody was wondering. Yeah. Nothing like a little cancer spray. So this is going to be kind of a wrestling match. Yeah. Did you just trip? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there like a thin gasket thing we're putting over this whole thing too? Nope. No. So this is like a liquid gasket. Yeah. TV. Well, it's not fucking coming out. Do you want me to go grab a bigger a thing to cut it with? Yeah. Best part's going to be when we fail and it smears all over the place and have to reapply. Yeah. So I put the gasket material on and I've allowed it to skin over. That's that disgusting thing that milk does after you microwave it. But that's in order to make it less gummy. Grab a little bit of hardware to put it on there before you get underneath with it on your chest. And then I put the differential on this uh, dolly thing, I'm, I'm gonna. You sure you're not gonna want this tripod and need to help? <laughs> okay, so now it's on my tummy. Did you even lift, bro? <clears throat> what I want to be careful for uh, is the lion hitting by any chance? No. I'm gonna lift the butt in a little bit more. Oh, oh, there you go. There you got some things lined up. How is it? Oh, nope, nope, nope. Okay, well, what are you noping about? Well, you needed to turn it to the right a little bit. You started catching there at the end. How's the line? Can you see if the line's pinched? It does not look pinched to me. Is that gonna fall out? I don't know. I'm going to start snugging up the hardware. And what we're hoping to see is a little bit of uh, gasket material squeeze out on all of the sides of the piece here. Is that one stripped out, I wonder? The best way to find out is to uh, send it. No, maybe just a little bit of paint on the threads. Obviously I went through and painted all the hardware. I'm definitely seeing a lot of stuff squeezing out, dude. One benefit though of doing this, if something goes wrong, I'll have done this. And so I know what to do to kind of fix it. At least I know what to do to pull it apart again, because I did that on my own. Hold on, I'm gonna go grab a blue towel. I'm gonna go through and wipe down the excess on there. 
towel and wipe. Okay. Once you have the differential inside, it's a good idea to do a visual inspection to make sure the line's clear and out of harm's way, which it is. Now we're gonna get this little guy out. There's a five millimeter Allen right here and a five millimeter Allen right here. Now we're gonna to wanna to loosen both of those. <laughs> Once you get the third member installed completely, you have to loosen those two up and get these little dowels out. And I'm speaking entirely from zero experience here. So that's completely loose. I'm gonna go get a magnet. Maybe it might magnet will help get this out. Do these have to come all the way out? Are they? Let's find out together. My guess is it's a little narrow pin that goes all the way through this pin, which is why it wouldn't come out. Yep. So I'll hold on to that. That's one. Put those somewhere safe, like right on top of the leaf spring. So the little icon tool is pretty handy though, because it has this ratcheting exterior. You can reach with your fingers when there's no more tension. Most of all though, it's just extremely small. So it makes it easy for getting into something like this differential here. Something tells me this pin might not. Oh, cool. Okay. We can now reach in and pull that guy out. This little carrier comes out. I'm not gonna remove this third pin. That one stays in there. I replaced the axle seals because there was a little bit of spot on one of them that was chipped. I don't know if you can see that. You can't see anything yet. Oh, now it's in. Okay. Is it in? Well, how are you trying to stick the thing on? How about a question for the ages there? Is it in, honey? Yes, it's in. Okay. Remember to support the axle housing or the axle shaft as much as you can so that you don't screw up your brand new seals that you just put in. Huh. What? This guy is supposed to go in between my two axle shafts. Is it too big? Or do you have to pull out one a little bit to get it in there? I don't know. Maybe there's another YouTuber that can show me. <laughs> 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 Looks a little big. Maybe these aren't supposed to be flush. Maybe they're supposed to be out a little bit. Yeah. Well, that's the only possible way to fit that in there. After speaking with Sean at River City Diff, he set me straight. So I got my two C-clips here and this little dowel piece that goes in between the axle shafts. As you can see, when you insert the axles all the way, there's no room for this. But that's because the axles don't go all the way in. I should have got some needle nose pliers. Where are they? There's no way you can find them. There's you don't know what they look like. I do know what needle nose pliers look like. So we're gonna put the C-clips on We'll start with the stock C-clamps. We want the, the axle, the, in, the axles themselves to be to the extreme out. You grab this guy and you want to see if it fits. It's magnetized the whole stupid thing. It just barely doesn't fit. So you bring the axles in, pull the C-clamps out. ARB sends you a bunch of sets of C-clamps. Some are thinner, more thin. So you need thinner ones than what you just used? I need slightly thinner ones than the ones I just used. Now there's a way to measure it, but I'm not gonna do that. Although I don't know Boy, these are really close. Are you even using a matching set? I don't know. They all got mixed up. Shit. These I know are bigger. So I'll put those over here. And these I know are super. So I'm gonna have to go get, uh, there's a tool. <laughs> I'll be right back. So 
we have a tool, but do you know how to use it? I don't. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm like, that one fits. That one doesn't fit. That one fits. So that's an exact match. Doesn't fit. The only ones that are barely smaller than my factory ones are these two. Science. It's tough being a mathematical genius. <laughs> I'm going to put these two C-clips in. These are the smallest ones that ARB has given me. So I push my foot right here and my top right here. Get a good wiggle on it. Yeah, very empty. Okay, I want to go up one size maybe. So we're going to go up to the next size. Third time. Oh, that's a good fit. And there's like no light. It barely fits in between there. Then we push this cage guy in here. That's going to be a little bit of a bear because now you're fitting. There you go. And there's hardly any play in between that dowel. We just need put to the put pins the pins back in. This one was on the bottom. <sighs> I hope this helps somebody who's sent off their ARB air locker and then got it back and then was like, how the hell do I do this now? Good and tight. One more quick inspection of the line. I like it. So we got our clamp, clamps attached to axle shafts. We got the little mysterious dowel piece that goes in and then the two pins that go on top and bottom. I installed the actuator. This is what it looks like installed. I had already wired this up a long time ago. ARB supplies the airline. It is extremely rigid. So I'll probably mess with this a little bit with the routing. For right now, just wanna see if the air locker works. That line's in. We'll go under here. Probably gonna run this through the frame. So once you get your line where you want it, which I don't have, but I have a preliminary test. You stick this cap in here. So narrow side goes in first. See, I've already taped some Teflon tape on here. And then this cap goes over the top of it. You gently snug that up. And then I need a 12 millimeter. It's gonna leak if I just use a set of needle nose to tighten this. Maybe not. I'll get the right wrench in a second. So I ran the line from my actuator to the air locker. We've done everything I think that I'm supposed to do at this point. You see my air tank is already pretty much full. But I'm going to activate my compressor right now. And because it's already full, the compressor's not engaging. So I'm going to... Try the air compressor or the locker? Yeah. Here we go. What are we looking for? I don't know. Did something happen? I heard something, but I didn't see anything. So I'm turning the axle, and they're both turning the same direction. See the other axle? So it's engaged. And I'm not hearing any air leaking or anything else. Let me switch the air locker off. You can hear it go psh. Now we're gonna turn it back and forth. Now they're, when I rotate them, they go opposite directions. I'm gonna turn this and activate the locker at the same time so you can see it engage, all right, ready? Oh. Yeah. Now it's open. Locked. Open. Locked. How cool is that? It's open, it works. It works, it's not leaking air, and I've got no play in the axle shafts. So Let's go over a couple things one more time. First thing, when you're getting the air locker, clean up the housing, the axle housing, so you can fit it in there better. You can take a lot of material off right where that little gap where the ring gear goes. 
Second thing, if you're upgrading to an air locker and you have a coarse splined pinion output shaft, get the fine spline. Third thing, if you remove the third member and you live in Northern California or anywhere near River City Differentials, there's Sean at River City Differentials, awesome. He answered all my questions, answered phone calls, bugging him. He's the kind of guy you want to install your stuff. Third thing, I don't, I, I did the third thing. Fourth thing, if I can do something like this, then so can you. I hope the video helps with explaining a couple things of installing an air locker with a, the C-clips and the floating or semi-float uh, rear axle on an FJ40. Sorry it was so glum, I'm tired of shit and I just got back to working graveyards so I'm all like zombied out. I'm not supposed to be awake right now. But thank you guys again for watching. Always appreciate people following, sharing and subscribing in the comments. Solid gold. And we'll see you next time on the Project Runway.